Hey guys, welcome back to the Learn to Be Indie channel. Today I brought you another tutorial on using toggles in Unity 5. Uh, we're going to be covering today basically toggles and how they work, um, as well as toggle groups, which I'm going to give you a little bit more information on, on later, and as well as another refresher on uh, using buttons to kind of finalize your selections. Now if you notice what I have here, this is more of a uh, preview before we actually get into anything. You'll see I have a three toggles, Warrior, Mage, and Priest, which we can select, and then a button to submit our changes. Now you can kind of use this tutorial as a way to set up uh, class selection. You can use it for menus and stuff. And as you can see, when we try to use these toggles, you can see that each toggle that we select is displayed in our console over here. And this is basically just something you can use to select one option out of many or things of that nature. Now this is a very simple thing we're going to be starting on, so we're going to go into a new scene here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just drag in our background, as we have in all my other tutorials. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to start making our toggles on the scene. Now what we're going to do is go right click, UI, and then toggle. And you'll see, as with previous tutorials, our canvas is not aligned with our background. And this is a simple fix. We just go to the canvas itself, go down to the canvas component, and change the render mode to screen space camera. And select our main camera to put in the, as the render camera. Once we have that, You'll also notice that our background, because it's not sitting in a further back position, it's in the same layer order as the canvas, it's not showing our toggle. But that's an easy fix too. You just go in your background and change the order layer to negative one. Now we have our visible uh, toggle here. We're just going to kind of position it in an area where we want. I'm going to put it up here. And then we're just going to make little detail, or change little details so that it's a little bit more visible. First I'll just name it Warrior Toggle. Once we do that, we're going to want to change the label on it so that it reads properly with the class we're going to make. So we're going to change this to Warrior. And down here you can pretty much adjust anything you want, the font size, font color, uh, any details, but I'm going to change the color to white here. And just so it's a little bit more there, I'm going to make it bold. So now that we have that, that's basically all we want to do for our details, but we want to create two more toggles. You can do this using just Control D. I'm going to drag one of them down a little bit, and then the third, we're going to drag it about an equal distance down from the second. Now we just have to change these so they're different names in different classes. So we're going to name this one Mage Toggle. Go to our label and change this to Mage. Then we're going to do the third one and we're just going to name this one Priest Toggle. And then we'll go into our label again, change this to Priest. Once we have that all set up, what we're going to want to do is change the uh, is on parameter in the actual toggle component itself so that none of these toggles are selected right off the bat and this is going to help us a little bit later when we get into our scripting. So we're going to go down to all three of these, turn that off, and then what we want to do is we want to kind of create an empty game object to act as both a panel for all these class selections as well as a um, toggle group. So we're going to make sure the game object is a child of the canvas, but not any of our toggles. And we're just going to name this class toggles. Now once you have that, you just want to select all of your toggles, drag it under the class toggles empty object. And we can adjust this freely, and all the toggles will move with it. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make this class toggles game object a toggle group. Now what toggle groups allow you to do is only select it only allows you to select one of the toggles that we have in the same toggle group. 
So in this case, we don't want players to be able to make mages and warriors. So we just add the toggle group component, component through the UI. And then you'll see on each of our toggles, we have no toggle group selected. So we're just going to select class toggles. Do that for all of them. Then once we do that, I'm just going to play it here so you can see kind of how it functions. You'll see if we select Warrior, we can't select any other ones. It'll only select on that one because they're all sharing the same toggle group. So the next thing we're going to want to do after this is we need to make a button to finalize all of our changes. So we're going to right click on the canvas, go to UI and Button, and then we're going to name this Submit Button. Now all we have to do is change the text on the button after we arrange it. Now we're going to name this Create Class. After we do this, we can pretty much get into the scripting portion of this. But we want to create an empty game object first before we do anything because this is going to act as our create class manager, so to speak. This is going to hold our script, and it's just something that I like to do. You don't have to do this, but I just like to do this. I prefer doing it in an empty game object. So this one, we're just going to create class manager. And then we're going to add a new c -sharp script. You'll see I have one of those over there for my preview. But to do this, we're just going to go, whoops, going to go down to new script, and we're going to name this create class system. So once we have our create class system script, we just want to open it up in Visual Studio. Yes, reload all. And right away, we can get rid of the start and update functions. We will not need these for this scene. Now the very first thing that we want to do before anything is because we're using toggles, we're not going to be able to create toggle objects without using a new namespace. The namespace we're going to be using is unityengine.ui. If you don't do this, you won't have the toggle variable selected. And you'll kind of see what I mean in a second here. So one of the main mistakes I made at the start is assuming because toggles are technically game objects that they would work as, as you know, just setting up variables as game objects. But there's a bit of an easier way to do it because you will not get the isOn parameter, which we're going to be using to check which toggle is active. So if you're doing this, public game object is warrior you're going to run into issues. So this is basically what I was doing before. As I was setting up game objects and thinking, OK, the toggles are going to work that way. I can select their is on parameter to check if they're on. But I ran into a lot of issues doing that. So what you actually want to do is use toggle. There's probably an easier way to do this with a toggle group, although I haven't really figured out how to do that yet. If somebody knows, I'd appreciate a comment below, but we won't get into that with this tutorial. So the next thing we're going to do, once we have the correct toggles set up as game objects, is we're going to want to create a function to check which of the toggle group is active or which of the toggles in here that we've selected are active. So to do this, we're just going to go public void active toggle. And what we're going to use to check the active toggle is an if-else statement. Now there's probably an easier way to do this. You could probably use a switch statement, although because I'm not using many toggles to begin with, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use a simple if-else statement. So this should be pretty simple. We go if is warrior dot is on, which is a parameter of the toggle variable and we're going to have it right to the console that the player selected warrior. And all we have to do after this is repeat this. We're going to go 
else if is mage dot is on we're gonna log to the console that the player selected mage lastly we're gonna do this for our priest class else if is priest oh I spelled priest wrong in our initial variable dot is on and we're gonna log to the console again that the player selected priest now when we run this in our button this is only gonna show one of these selected so it's not gonna show all of the all of the logs for player selected warrior player selected mage and player selected priest but that's all we have to do to check which toggle is active and we're just gonna make some functionality for our button by doing public void on submit and just as something I like to do we're going to create a log in the console that just shows that we're selecting the class and then we're gonna check which toggle is active by simply running our active toggle function. I seem to be running into an issue right here saving my actual script. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm gonna try to get this figured out here. Oh, so as you can see, because I wasn't able to actually save my script, I don't know if my submit button function out, or, my, or if my submit button function is actually going to show up here. Okay, doesn't look like it. I think I'm just running into a little bit of a Visual Studio Unity bug. I'm just going to try a few things here. Just gonna restart Unity real quick here, guys. I'll cut this portion out of the video so it's not uh, dragging on too long here. Apologize for that. Sometimes this kind of stuff happens, though. All right, we're back here. Sorry about that, guys. Sometimes you just run into issues. So just to kind of go over what we were already going over. I haven't changed anything in the script yet. I'm still on selecting the button actual submit function in the button itself, but you can see all the scripts are the same. All the functions are the same and everything's written exactly as it was before. So basically what we're going to want to do is we're going to go back to our button and now this should actually show us really easily that our on submit function is there, which it is. So we'll do this. That makes sure when we click the button it runs that script or that function and then what we're going to want to do is add the toggles to the actual create class manager thing those variables we set up in the script itself are not going to actually be active because they don't have toggles in them yet but we'll simply drag these into the actual create class manager so that the appropriate toggles are for the appropriate variable variables here and once you do this you should be good to go. So now you can see if we select warrior, major priest, we only get one choice and it logs the correct class to the console. So we select mage, we've selected mage and we get another selecting class log. Do the same with priest and now we're done. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, simple tutorial, even though we ran into a little bit of an issue here. I apologize for that, but as I said, it happens. So uh, if you guys liked the video, be sure to like. And if you know anything I can work on or, or want to see something in future videos, please be sure to comment below. As always, thanks for watching, guys.